this section, we are going to discuss a variation of the simplex method that is called the dual simplex method. This method is important because it's heavily used when you are tackling a mixed integer linear programming problem, which will be the topic of the next videos related to uh, solving uh, mixed integer programming uh, models and giving another view of these type of problems. Hi everybody, congratulations. You have made it to the last chapter of this linear programming overview. So, good job. Um, in, this, in this section, uh, we are going to describe a variation of the simplex method that is very important when we solve uh, mixed integer linear programming problems. We, this, this will be the subject of the next, next set of videos that we are going to have. So this is a, a, an important method that is important that um, you get an understanding of, of what is happening. So the, the key idea of the dual simplex method is to apply the simplex method as, as, as we have uh, learned to the dual problem, but using the canonical form of the primal problem. So since the information of the primal and dual uh, problem are, are the same, basically uh, uh, we are going to use the canonical form of the primal problem uh, and we are going to make a variation of the simplex method to, to solve this problem using duality ideas. So let's, let's consider the, the following example. So again, we have the furniture problem where we want to maximize the total revenue of a production plan and we have two constraints, mahogany constraints and labor constraints and we are going to build tables and chairs. So let's consider uh, uh, a basic infeasible solution. So what, and we, we have talked about this, this solution in the past. Essentially what we are doing here is uh, we don't build any chairs, we build 30 tables and in this particular case, when we build uh, 30 tables, we basically are violating the mahogany constraint. So H1 is equal to minus 200, meaning that in order to build 30 chairs, we will need an extra 200 units of mahogany to be able to do that. And also notice that H2 is zero, meaning that we are consuming all the capacity that we have available for labor. So this uh, basic infeasible solution is represented by this um, red uh, point. So let's, let's transform this original problem into uh, a canonical form respect to two, the two basic variables that we have in the, in, in the infeasible solution. So, uh, these variables are uh, the variables that are non-zero, which is to build 30 tables, and the other basic variable is going to be H1 equal to minus 200. We know that it's infeasible, but it, it, this is a basic solution, so we want to consider. So we are going to represent uh, or express this problem in a canonical form with respect to the basic variables X2 and H1 and the non-basic variables are going to be x1 equal to zero and h2 equal to zero. And as we did it before, after some algebra, algebra operations, we say that x1 is going to be equal to minus 200 and uh, minus a linear expression or, or of the non-basic variables, x1 and x2, which are set to zero. X2 is going to be equal to 30 uh, and uh, minus a, a linear expression in terms of the non-basic variables X1 and H2. And in the objective function, we, uh, the revenue that we could generate will be $2,400. And then here we have the non-basic variables and the reduced cost associated with these non-basic variables, and both are negative. So let's, let's just uh, recall a little bit of what we do when, when we use the simplest method. 
So basically, what you do when you apply the simplest method, you start with the initial basic solution, and you move from one initial basic solution to another initial basic uh, to another uh, basic feasible solution until you find the, the optimal value. So what we are going to do is to follow similar ideas when we apply the dual simplex method. So uh, in the maximization problem, uh, to characterize the optimal solution uh, uh, when we have the problem expressed in a canonical form, if the non-basic variables uh, have coefficients or reduced costs that are less or equal to zero, then we declare that that uh, problem is optimal for the maximization problem. The idea of the dual simplex method is to start with a dual basic feasible solution. And by dual basic feasible solution, we mean that the reduced cost of the non-basic variables will be less or equal to zero. Notice that if all the basic uh, variables are non-negative, then the current solution is basic feasible uh, for the primal uh, problem in a canonical form that satisfy the optimality conditions that says that the reduced costs associated with the non-basic variables are uh, um, uh, zero or negative. In that case, we will have an optimal solution. Uh, in this particular example, we have a dual basic feasible solution that has reduced costs that are uh, less or equal to zero. As a matter of fact, they are negative. So this, uh, the non-basic variable x1 has a coefficient of 25 divided by 3, a negative coefficient, and also a negative co coefficient for h2. And the, the values of the basic variables are x2 equal to 30, which is feasible, but h1 is equal to minus 200, which is infeasible. So this, this problem satisfies the optimality conditions, but so it's dual feasible, but it's not primal feasible because h1 is a negative number. So suppose that at least there is one basic variable that is negative, because if all the basic variables are positive, then we have primal feasibility and dual feasibility, and that's it. We are done. So uh, for this particular problem, we are going to choose the basic variable with the most uh, negative value. And we just have one variable that is negative, and this is the uh, H1. Uh, so we say that H1 is going to leave the basis. So now we are going to look at the coefficients of the non-basic variables in the equation that has the basic variable. So if the coefficients of the non-basic variables in the equations are all negative, means that if a non-basic variable uh, becomes positive, we are going to make this number more negative. So if all the coefficients of the non-basic variable are, are, are negative, then the dual simplex method is going to declare this problem as infeasible because there is no way that we can convert this problem uh, or the value of H1 into a positive number. So let's assume, as we have it here, that we have coefficients of the non-basic variables in the equation number two that are positive, meaning that if we increase the value of, of, of x1 or h2, we, we, we should be able to make uh, h1 positive or zero. So um, what we are going to do is to how do we decide which non-basic variable uh, uh, are going to become basic variable? So which variable x1 or h2 are going to be uh, positive? So what we are going, similar to what we did in the simplex method, we are going to use the minimum ratio test in such a way that we guarantee that when we increase the value of any of these non-basic variable, we remain with reduced cost associated with the non-basic variables to be negative or zero. 
So if we apply the minimum ratio test, when we divide the reduced cost of the non-basic variable x1 by the coefficient of the variable x1 in the equation uh, that has the, uh, the variable that is going to leave the basis, so we have this ratio here, 25 divided by 3 divided by 25 divided by 3, which is equal to 1. And then the other ratio is to divide this term here divided by uh, this term here. So this is equal to 4. So what is the minimum value that we will get? Um, so is this one here, 1, 20, uh, the coefficient 25 divided by 3. So now we say that x1 is going to enter the basis and we are going to do pivoting related to the new uh, basic solution, uh, which is going to be uh, determined by the variables x2, which is to build tables, and x1, which is going to be to build chairs. And again, uh, the pivot is determined by uh, this number, which is at the intersection of the non-basic variable that is going to enter the basis and the equation that determines the basic variable that is going to leave the basis. So we are going to do pivoting related to this uh, equation. And doing pivoting means that we are going to express all the basic variables in terms of the non-basic variables. So we take equation two, we do some algebraic uh, operations, and then we have that x1, which is the new basic variable, is going to be equal to 24, meaning that we are going to build 24 tables minus a linear uh, combination of the non-basic variables h1 and h2. And remember, non-basic variables are always set to zero. So this means that we are going to build 24 tables. Now in equation three, we replace the value of x1 in that equation. And after doing some algebraic uh, operations, we define, we, we find that x2 is going to be equal to 14 minus a linear combination of the non-basic variables. So that means that we are going to build 14 tables. And uh, we do the same thing in the objective function, and now we get that the value in the objective function is going to be a total revenue of $2,200. The reduced cost associated with mahogany is equal to uh, minus one, and the reduced cost associated to the labor constraint is minus four. So, um, and uh, the, pivoting, uh, the pivoting step basically moves from one dual basic feasible solution to another uh, uh, dual basic feasible solution. And in this particular case, we identify that um, now uh, all the decision variables or all the basic variables are, are, are non-negative. So we are going to build 24 chairs and 14 tables and h1 and h2 are equal to zero. So the solution is feasible. And also we see that in the objective function, the reduced cost associated with the non-basic variables are negative. So that means that we, are, uh, we have dual feasibility. So when we have primal feasibility and dual feasibility, uh, we can say that the solution is optimal based on the complementary conditions that we defined before. So we have found the optimal solution uh, using the dual simplex method. Why? Why we bother explain you this variation of the simplex method? Because in a way, uh, dual simplex method is recommended when um, you have uh, available a dual basic feasible solution. So many times it's easier to identify a dual basic feasible solution than to identify a primal basic feasible solution. 
Another reason why the dual simplex method is uh, particularly useful is that you might have a new constraint. So you don't know uh, what to do with this new, new constraint. Uh, uh, so uh, in, for these par particular problems, uh, you can use the, the dual simplex method and identify uh, or, or, or satisfy the new constraint and start with the dual uh, uh, basic feasible solution. And in a way, this, this approach of adding constraints to a linear programming problem is, is a method that is called uh, the cutting place method that is heavily used when you solve mixed integer programming problems. So the dual simplex method is very important when you are solving mixed integer programming problems. And this will be the subject of uh, the next chapter in this um, uh, video series. And uh, when we are uh, dealing with uh, the cutting planes method, we are going to discuss a little bit again about the dual simplex method. So with this, we conclude uh, our video series related to linear programming. And I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, video series and you, you have learned essential concepts associated with linear programming. And also, you have learned a little bit how to use the Gurobi uh, Python API in such a way that you can build your own linear programming models and use the powerful Gurobi optimizer to, to solve linear programming problems that can have millions of variables and constraints, and Gurobi should be able to solve it in a reasonable amount of time. So thank you very much and see you next time when we address chapter two and chapter three. Hasta la vista.